hi and welcome to Journey into the Word with J.P. Olson. You'll need a congregation to offer me your praise. Hi, Wanda from Monterey, Tennessee. I'm just sitting here and wondering why I can't see anybody. <laughs> I don't know why I have a delay on here. What's going on? Hi, Juliana. Good to see you from New York. It's a blessing to see all my faithful followers and friends that are joining me here. Yes. Let's see. That's one of the songs from my CD. Yes. Hi, Colleen from New Mexico. Wanda from Monterey and Juliana from New York and those who are joining me today is such a blessing to have you with me. Um, this is the day the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. So I want to welcome each of you here. Thank you for the hearts and the likes, you know, that gets me motivated. <laughs> yes, you get all of my attention. Let me get my hair together here. Uh, when you worship me alone, I love this song. This was specifically for me. And was written for me. And um, I love it. It's this Lord said, I don't need a congregation. I don't need all these instruments. I love to hear you when you sing your song and you worship me alone. I don't have to have all everything else, majestic choirs. And he said, I don't have to have all those things. I just want you and you alone. Love. To hear you when you sing your song And you worship me Alone Hi Kelly! Yes, today is March 1st. Hi Devon from Memphis. Kelly from Wisconsin. Yes, we just need Jesus. And I'm going to talk about that today. I love to hear you when you sing your song, God says. And you worship me alone. Yes. Yes. So I want to thank you and welcome all of you here. Hi, Phyllis from Memphis. If you're working, I'm so happy you're here with us. Taking time on your break. If you're off, I'm so glad you decided to come along again today. So I want to just bless each one of you again with love and happiness. I know you could be doing a numerous things today. And some of you are on your lunch break or at work and you're joining me. And you know I'm blessed about that. And so this, I'm just grateful. Uh, Looks like we're going to have a little sunshine today. I don't know if it's going to last, but sunshine is always in my life when I think about the glory of God and the goodness of God. So we want to thank you. We just want to jump right into what we have. I have to share with you today. If you're on here for the first time and other, other, others of you, you know the announcements and everything. We want you to stay connected. Just don't come on Saturday and Wednesday. Go visit our website. Go look at YouTube. Go look at our trailer there. All the above. Reach out and touch somebody today. If you haven't done it, you should wake up and say, Lord, who can I help today? Who can I help today? Then I know my living will not be in vain. If it's just somebody, you could just call with a word of encouragement. And we just bless you today. Thank you. Hi, Geraldine. It's good to see you on. We just bless each one of you today. We thank you. Because once again, you have taken time out to come and do what? Hear the word of God. And we're just so blessed that you've done it. And I'm just going to jump right into it. And, and Geraldine will list announcements all on the in, uh, here in the content as far as in the comment box. And those of you, if you're here for the first time, and if you enjoy the word this morning, share it. I'm going to do today is a day that it may be a message many are not ready for. And it's not one of those jumping up and down, but it's a message to think about. And it's a message to really... Think about, okay? So we have, it, and, and as Geraldine placing the, the prayer requests and different things in there, I, all the names that were listed last Saturday, we prayed over. We prayed over, I prayed over them. And then I thought, let me just share them with the intercessors and to get a double portion. So if you put your name and the people that you wanted to pray for, we covered that. We covered that. So I want to thank you again. But the message today is this. Be careful who... And what your itching ears are listening to versus the word of God. Okay? Because many have tried, but all have failed. They figure out days and months, timings and hours, and all they come up with are wrong guesses. As far as I can tell, this is the only secret that the Father ever kept from the Son. And that's in Matthew 24, 35. 
It says, but no one, in, er, in 24, 36 says this, but no one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, the Son or only the Father, in Matthew 24 and 36. I recall a conversation with a friend I know several years ago. When a man came to their city, claiming to see the day and hour of the Lord's return. Over the next several months, he gathered a large contingent of followers. He encouraged his followers to sell all they had because none needed possessions after the second coming. His date came and went, and, we, and they never heard of him again. Today, we have believers who are just as naive and vulnerable. What did Jesus say about the end times? We're going to talk about that. Some people are nervous. They're scared. I may not have that many people on today because some people are nervous and scared to hear about the end time. They're afraid to hear, but you need to be listening about it and hearing and seeing what Jesus is talking about. So, you know, I said, well, what if I have anybody today? I said, because this is a message I don't know if they really want to hear. Hi, Sharon from Wisconsin, because I'm just going to, because if you look at today, I can't open my email. I don't watch the news like my husband does. He, he watches it all the time. I can't watch the news. I can't open my email. Train derailment and, and, and killing uh, 36 people. A uh, Greek uh, uh, killings. And I promise you, I've, I've signed up with the New York Times and the New York, some other New York, whatever it is, Daily News or something. Hi, Sifraz. And New York, I believe, is Armageddon. New York is a complete war zone. And I'm quite sure, Juliana, you hear about it because you, but this is in different areas of New York. Uh, the Bronx, all day long, all day long. I said, Lord, is it Armageddon there? You look, High London from Canton, Georgia, you look at these various cities, Memphis, Tennessee, Chicago, and, and the ones that are just hitting hard with murder around the, glo around, around the globe. All this time, bless you too, Safraz, all this time we see these things happening. But never have we seen it happen on this level before. Never. I don't care what you say. Never have it been on this level before. And people just keep living like it's nothing going on. And that's why you hear me saying, I don't say it just to impress anybody or either to, to please myself or, or to flatter myself or anything else. But every day I say to God in my prayer, Lord, if you come today, I'm ready. Search my heart. Convict me. Hi, Claudia. I got to pause for a minute here because Claudia is on. And Claudia lost her son, her only son. She's the sister of Juliana. She lost her husband last year. Sometimes grief is difficult for us. But we prayed and we're praying for her through what her loss. And so I just wanted to see this because she haven't been on for a little while because of the loss. But she's on today. So, Claudia, we're happy to see you on uh, today, and we're praying, continually praying for you and in your loss. So I wanted to pause to say that. Uh, but I just want to go back to say this. We are hearing so many, we, we see so much, so much killing, so many things are going on, and we yet won't speak against the spirit of murder. And we see all of the suicides, everything that's going on. And we say, well, that happens, but not on this level. And what does it say? So I jump over to Revelations. And I said, Lord, I just want to make sure I don't miss something. I just want to make sure I don't miss something. And I'm saying this, hallelujah, because if we look at, we don't know when Jesus' return will be. But we need to live as if he's coming today. So we know we got it right. Lord, convict me of anything. Or my heart should do it. If anything, they're standing in the way here. I want what I say to add up with my actions and my heart. I want the world to know. I put out a, a quote and Geraldine put it on here for me and say, I'm not here, I, I, I'm not here to have people to love me. That's why I'm not, that's not my purpose. But I'm here to love people unconditionally. We don't get to choose, pick and choose who we love because God says love them all. So that's what we have to do in, even in our situations that we've had with people and we say, I just can't forgive that person. We need to live as if he was coming today. Now, it, the word says no one knows. It said, but no one knows about that day or hour. That's the only secret that the father never kept from the son. This is the only secret that the father ever, I didn't, I'm sorry, never. This is a secret the father ever kept from the son. It's when you're returning, okay? 
Now, what did Jesus say about end times? Uh, JP, what do you know about end times? I'm just going about the word of God. I'm not trying to predict any date. I just said, you'd be, be also ready. That's what the word say. It, it's a number, it said, compare Jesus. What did Jesus say about end times? It says, Jesus before, let me just say it like this. Compare Jesus' behavior before and doing now, end times. That's why I tell people all the time. If we lived in the Old Testament, God was ruthless. He was, <laughs> he was ruthless. He just wiped people out. He just swallowed them up. He just did whatever. He got rid of them. Place and everything else. And we have those things. Hi, Gertrude from South Africa. And we have those plagues and things going on. But before end time commenced, Jesus was filled with love and compassion for the woman who touched his robe in hopes of healing. We know he said something went through me. Somebody touched me. And she just only touched a hem. Can you imagine just a hem of the gun? Not even him. But he said something went out with me. When you had that touch by Jesus, you could say, oh, he touched me. And oh, what joy that filled my soul. Because something happened. And now I know that I'm whole. Because he touched me. Yes, yes, Claudia, you are welcome, my dear. So before the end times commenced, Jesus was filled with love and compassion. This, this message today, I hope, is a Holy Ghost anointing that you feel it today. Before the end time commenced, Jesus was filled with love and compassion for the woman who touched his robe in hopes of healing. He has loving kindness for the woman about to be stoned by the Pharisees who wants to come and, and talk about her sin. And yet none of them were standing when Jesus said, who, who want to convict her? Who, who's saying she's guilty? Because they had to think, because I think Jesus was writing all the sins down. And, and some of them saw the sins that they had committed. Hi, Wendy from South Africa. Hi, Lisa from Wisconsin. So before the end times commenced, Jesus was filled with love and compassion for the woman who touched his robe in hopes of healing. He has loving compassion for the woman who was about to be stoned by the Pharisees. He protects Mary after the disciples criticize her for wasting perfume on Jesus. Because Jesus knows what was happening. Isn't it amazing how we want to, they want to, the men want to exempt us women out of the way that we just need to just maybe say a prayer and sit down? I, I'm on a board now. I went to, was on a conference Saturday after my message and I thought, okay, I need to talk to this evangelist here. I'm going to call him and talk to him because I have a problem. Who are the women? I've attended five conferences. I haven't seen a woman yet. Speak. It's all the men. But they can say a prayer. I got a problem with that. <laughs> and because Jesus used them all. And he used us as you see. Uh, you don't hear any more about the woman at the well. I have to spank my, touch my dog because he's in my purse. Excuse me, you all. So the woman, the woman at the well was the first evangelist. She ran off and told the city, told the men, I met a man. And so then we have Mary who's there to wipe his feet in the oil. And then you have the woman, the men won the cues. And then you have the, the women with the only ones left at the crucifixion. And John, because everybody else had left. And Jesus, when he, when he rose from the dead, who was there? It was Mary. She had to go and find the disciples because they were all in hiding. So don't put us to the side, okay? I had to put that in there because when I started talking about these women, okay? And once, and only once, did Jesus ever describe his character. For I am, this is what he said, for I am gentle and humble in heart. That's in Matthew 11, 29. Isn't that a beautiful picture of Jesus? But now let's look at the second hand of this. On the other hand, during his second coming, Jesus comes, how do we read this? Jesus comes riding on a cloud, on a white horse, with a sword to kill and bronze boots to stamp on, on those who have warred against him. And even those who are going to be saying, oh, Lord, I did this, I prophesied in your name, and he's going to say, I never knew you. Okay? He's going to even be, I'm telling you, on, the, on, the, on this other, on the second coming, we're going to see something different. Jesus comes riding on a white horse. But at the trumpet sound, with a sword to kill and bronze boots to stamp on those who have warred against him. That's in Revelations 19, 11, and 16. Revelation 1 and 15. There's nothing heartwarming or attractive that can be said about his activities during the end times. He comes in judgment and vengeance. 
It is interesting to reflect on yourself. Which picture of Jesus do you like best? Are you enjoying his love and compassion? Or are you still choosing the word that he's upset and angry with you, far away from you, or ashamed of you? Jesus reveals his weeping compassion. He loves you. Do not hurry past this verse right here in Matthew 23, 37 and 39. Oh, Jerusalem, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you are not willing. Matthew 23, 37, 39. It reminds me of the verse said, but if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. You know that verse in Second Chronicles. And then, and, and turn, he said, and turn from your wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and heal the land. And what? Our land not here yet. Don't look like it's going to get healed unless we can come together as one. So he said, oh, Jerusalem, which speaks of us. How often have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing, if you were not willing. In Matthew 23, 37 and 39. Have you thought, have you ever thought that perhaps Jesus is praying for you? Is he weeping with compassion? Instead, we often see him as angry and upset and disappointed and distant or inspecting when we sin and disobey. Maybe he is more likely brokenhearted and weeping over our sin and behavior. Ask yourself, do I see the honest of Jesus or an unbiblical made-up version? Not even Jesus knows the secret time of his return. And why are you talking about this, JP? I am talking about this today. Because our world is in such a disarray, which never seemed like this. We're trying to put out a fire here, the trail, train the rail. We're trying to put out a fire here in Ohio, the train, the rear. We're trying to put a fire here because the plane has crashed. We're trying to do this because the, the earth uh, earthquakes. We're trying to do this because of tsunamis and hurricanes and tornadoes. And we're trying to do this because there's murder just rapid running in, in, in the cities that I call. We, we're trying to put a fire out there because cancer is, is, is just an epidemic now all over the world. And we're saying, Lord, Lord. Some people are saying, Lord, Lord, why don't you come on now? There's some people asking, Lord, come on now, come now. We can't take it anymore. We're seeing all of these things happen. And they've been happening, but not on a scale like this. You put out one, fire here comes another. And every year, and we think it's going to get nice. We think it's going to get good every year. No, it doesn't. Until we learn, I don't care how much you pray. If you can't come together, everybody come together and line with God's word. And you got some problems against your sister, brother, cousin, or, or the other race, or whatever it is. You got some issues. You got some cleaning up to do. And God said, I'm not trying to heal your land because, number one, I've given you the authority to step on scorpions, to speak and heal, and what you're doing, calling on me. You're not even using your authority. You're running and hiding. Many have tried. Not even Jesus knows the secret timing of his return. Many have tried, but all have failed. They figure out days and months and times and hours, and all they come up with are wrong guesses. But no one in Matthew 24, 26, no one knows about that day or hour. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. You see, we listen, we run after these prophetic words 24-7, and nothing is wrong in running after prophets. But some of you all, some people just run too much after too many. And then you're so vulnerable and naive, you believe everything they say. Instead of going back to the words, so that they'll come up, somebody come up and say, you know, Jesus, he's, we've had a lot of, even prophets, who have prophesied the end time, when he's coming. And you'll go and say, oh, they say, let's go and pile up, let's get all our things in order, because this prophet said, that is so crazy. That is to me so foolish. Yes, God has some true living prophets. But when somebody comes to tell you, this is the day he's coming, and you are believing, following him, you heard what the word of God say, and you start running, piling up things, yes. There are many believers today who are vulnerable and naive to that same thing. So if I can come back there today, I'm a prophet, and I tell you, God showed me, and Jesus is coming this time. I know, and you need to start doing this, and, and, and sell all your goods, and we're going to put something over here in this pile. I, I'll manage your funds, and we're going to do this, and we're going to be ready, and all of these things, and, and this is when Jesus is coming, and come on, we're going to prepare. And you sit there and buy it, and you mark the date on your calendar. Just live every day as if Jesus is coming today. Because we don't know. 
The Father doesn't either. The angels in heaven doesn't know. They don't know. Jesus opposes deception. Jesus was deeply concerned about his followers being deceived into following a false Christ. And we see have the people doing that today. I'm not telling you, telling, trying to sell you a bag of goods. I'm telling you here what the, what the word of God said. Jesus was deeply concerned about his followers being deceived into following a false Christ. Watch out that no one deceives you is his word in Matthew 24, 5. Watch out that no one deceives you, deceives you for many will come in my name claiming I'm the Christ and will deceive many. You got people prophesizing out. That's the John. That prophet is the new John. This, and everybody run, let me send all my money in. I'm just telling you, be wise. Be discerning. Don't be foolish. Go and see what the word of God says. He talks about the Antichrist. He said, watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming I'm the Christ, and will deceive many. They will deceive many. They're deceiving them today. Are they deceiving the world? No, they're not. They're deceiving believers and followers, because the world is already out there doing their thing. The best way to be undeceived is to know the truth. And how will you know the truth? By going to the Word of God. This is why saturating our minds with the Bible is so critically important. When we see the truth, we can spot the error. Jesus used the book of Daniel to show that the Antichrist would be the best deceiver of all times in Matthew 24, 15. Jesus often spoke, warning his disciples about slipping into deception. If he were so intensely concerned, we ought to be as well. Here are some tools Satan might use to deceive you. Distorting or misinterpreting the Bible. He's good at distorting the Bible. He knows the Bible from Genesis and Revelation. And he knows we don't. So he distorts the truth and we just go with it because we don't read it. He denies the divinity of Jesus. He rejects the virgin birth. He promotes teaching of and associate with an individual who gathers a following. Rejecting the substitutionary death of Christ on the cross for our sin. Not realizing that following the teaching, the principles of a false teacher will lead you to hell. False teaching will, do, will add to or subtract from the importance of faith. It's just like the people that's planning on having next month the 10th the celebration of the satanic gathering and the, and the satanic group and the satanists and all of those. And the first thing they tell you, I went to read. And the first thing they tell you, first thing they say is, well, people think we follow Satan, but we don't. We're just all a bunch of vegans and vegans and, you know, vegetarians and, and, and we eat healthy and, and we don't do those things. Oh, and by the way, we sell, we sell you know, pro, little products. We have one so-called bezel bubble and they laugh. Well, isn't Satan, one of his names, Bezabel? Okay, and then and that's how Satan deceives you. Oh, we're not worshiping the devil. Come on. You can come to this. And so some of even you believers are saying, well, they say they're not worshiping the devil, so maybe. Oh, man, it just, it bothers me. That our minds are so weak to say, oh, well, 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 they're saying they don't do that. Isn't that what Satan said? Didn't Satan say that to Eve? And you often hear me say, oh, did, did God really tell you that? Oh, he just said that because he knows you and know what he knows. And so they say, oh, we're not, we're not serving that. We're not doing that. So you have to take a moment and evaluate now how well you know the scriptures. Do you feel secure in your Bible knowledge that gives you confidence that you're on the right track? Could there be anything in your life that might be construed as deceit? Think about the Christians you know. Are there any that need to be undeceived? Do you feel comfortable approaching them if you feel that they are in error? I just said, Lord, help their unbelief. Jesus identified the sign of the Antichrist in the word of God. Jesus identified the sign that would herald the coming of Antichrist to begin the seven years of tribulation. Jesus quotes from the book of Daniel. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation, Spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Hi, Victor from Nairobi. He said, let the reader understand. He wants you to understand. And that's in Matthew 24, 15, and 16. Let's be certain that we all understand. I'll make it as simple. From Daniel's time, God's prophetic time schedule for Israel was 490 years. The prophetic clock stopped seven years early at 483. Years when Jesus entered triumphantly into the temple on Palm Sunday, which is coming up soon. The numbers work out to about 30 AD. There is now one seven year per a period remaining. The book of Revelation is all about that seventh year, often called the tribulation or the great tribulation, which concludes with the second coming of Christ. When the Antichrist signs a peace treaty with Israel, 
The seven year prophetic clock will restart. After the first three and a half years, he breaks the Israel, the Israeli peace treaty. That's in Daniel eleven twenty one. I'm not saying something JP coming up or something. No, this is the word of God. And, and slaughters a pig on the temple altar. He sets up a little image called the abomination of desolation. Okay. We'll go back and read, read Daniel eleven twenty one. 21. It says in Daniel 9, 27, we will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Daniel 9, 27. See, we are looking forward when the saints are taken up into heaven. However, Jesus makes it clear that the most critical sign is the signing of that peace treaty with the Antichrist. Now, that's the word of God. The seals and the trumpets and bowls of God's breath are poured out on earth during this last three and a half years in Revelation 6, 7, 6 and 16. Now comes the question. Just when does the church, when Jesus go up, when Jesus returns into the clouds to take his children home to heaven? Well, Jesus gave two clear pictures and, coming, and the coming destruction. This is what he said. In Luke 17, 26 and 30. We learn just as it was in the days of Noah. So it will be in the days of the son of man. They were eating and drinking and marrying and been given in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, just as it was in the last, the days of Lot. They were eating and drinking and buying and selling and planting and building. But on the day when Lot went out from Sodom, fire and sulfur rained from the heaven and destroyed them all. So will it be on the day when the Son of Man is returned. There are countless pictures of, 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 of Jesus coming and removing God's people and before destruction. Noah, Lot, the children of Israel, and the Red Sea are just a few. So for reflection, explore the Old Testament stories and look for pictures as well as prophecies. What do you observe? Jesus was quite concerned that his followers understand the activities that will ultimately occur in the temple. The placing of the abomination of desolation is a signal that tells Israel to scatter and run because the greatest wave of anti-Semitism ever known is about to commence. I'm going to say that again. This is in the Bible. This is not JP. That's why you need to read your word. Jesus was quite concerned that his followers understand the activities that will ultimately occur in the temple. And we're seeing them occur now. He said the placing of the domination of desolation is the signal that tells Israel to scatter and run because the greatest wave of anti-Semitism ever known is about to commence. Do we see that happening? That's in Matthew 24, 23. Jesus said his second coming would be quick, surprising, and devastating. He said, so be ready. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand meal while be while I'll be taken in the other left. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will return. Matthew 24, 39 and 40. He could come in any minute or any moment. Few people are anticipating his return. Most people never give it a thought. Few people are, uh, they take a moment and imagine what happens emotionally to those left behind when thousands of Christians rise up to meet the Lord. And you have to ask yourself, are you ready? Consider how embarrassing to be caught in sin when he arrives. In a flash, it says, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Now, can you imagine, said the blink of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. How fast is the twinkling of an eye? It will take the speed of light, 183,000 seconds to move from the front of the eyeball to the back. Blink your eyes. This was too slow. Now imagine that you just heard the trumpet call when the angels gather, the elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. That's in Matthew 24 and 31. I am planning to be ready as we ascend. Jesus spoke often about how to handle end time persecution. And I'm just about to wrap up. Got two more to go here. Just hang in here with me because I want you to hear this. We're in, a, we're in such a crucial time now. To be plain. Before all this, they will lay hands on you and persecute you. This is what Jesus spoke. They will deliver you to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors, all on account of my name. Then you'll be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. Matthew 29, 24, 9, 13. A number of church leaders declared that more murder 
of persecution against Christians. It's happening in this generation and ever before on earth. We know it. Some of you who are evangelists, who are missions, who are doing various, some of you now are getting a, a slap. You, Wendy, and you, Gertrude, and you, Wanda, and, and the different ones, you, Lisa, the different ones, Zero Dean, the different ones on here that are standing uh, and sharing their faith and, and, and sharing God, and many of you, but I know some of these are missionaries and evangelists and, and different ones that are standing in his name, and they said, and we will be rejected, we'll be talked about. Don't get upset when it happened to you. Don't say, well, I don't know, Pastor JP, why, you know, what I did. You did nothing wrong. It's what you did right. And so they're going to come against you. And some people, we read all over in the news every day, all over the world, Christians are being persecuted. And Christ said this will happen really close to the end times. So, so a number of church leaders declare that more murder or persecution against Christians is happening in this generation than ever before on earth. And I know, Gertrude, it is scary. It is so scary. But we need to get it right now. At, this, at that time, many will turn away from the faith. Now, let me tell you, I want you to hear this. And this is from the word of God in Matthew 24, 10 and 13. I see this happening every other day. Because I get calls or somebody messages me about they walking away from their faith. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of, the love of most will grow cold. But the one, one who stands firm to the end will be saved. That's in Matthew 24 and 10. I don't care how much they come against you. You keep standing. Think about whether or not you have decided to follow Christ no matter the cost. See, that's why I often say about myself, I'm sold out. I'm sold out. I don't just say it. I'm sold out. So I'm not going to compromise with anybody. But the word of God said, but do not worry beforehand you will defend yourselves. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. That's the word of God in Luke 21, 13 and 15. Jesus spoke often about devastation before his second coming. I got one more to go. Then he said to them in Matthew 21, 10 and 11, then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and famines and pestilence in various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven. And Jesus also mentioned that war and many other catastrophes. In fact, the catal catalyst events during the second coming will rival the creation of the universe. Matthew 24, 21. Think about how the weapons of war have increased. Since Jesus' time, in his day, soldiers fought with swords and spears and arrows. Today, the, thermo the thermonuclear, the thermonuclear, let me just put it like this, the thermonuclear killing zone stretches all the way around the world now. Somebody can push a button and blow up the United States if they want to in, in North Korea and other places. And number 10, finally, Jesus invites all. Jesus is no respecter of only certain persons. That's not what I say. You don't get to pick and choose who you love. You don't think you're so important that you're better than anybody else. Jesus is no respect of character of only certain persons. We're all his. He invites people of all races and cultures and creeds to open their eyes and let him come in. I can't understand why these people walking around here. I'm so holy than thou, but you hate the other race. You got a problem. You're not going to make it. I'm just going to say it because Jesus said, no, no, you still carry some stuff. No. You have to say, Lord, cleanse me through and through. Even me, Lord, even me. He invites people of all races, culture, and creeds over their lives and let him come in. Somebody need to hear this message. Somebody who don't, probably don't want to hear it. And leaders and everybody else who are in high places need to hear it. Revelation 3.20 says, so be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and open the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. That's what the word of God said in, 30, in Revelation 3 and 10. But some people don't want certain, want certain people to eat with them. Look down on people. They're so important. Get somewhere and sit down. That's what you need to do. That's what I tell them. Okay. So they want to keep doing the same thing. They don't want to repent. So his last words before his ascension in Acts 1 and 8, as I wrap up, compelled his disciples to preach the gospel to all nations. That's why I come and when I ask you to help and to give and to... To, to, to donate and to, to help us. I don't want to see anyone lost. My ministry is about soul winning, but everybody's not going to make it in. But if I can get to one or two, and I want to reach the world, I want to reach the nations. I'm not just about this just click right here, or, or you know, we just get this certain group of people. You see, I love our ministry here because if you look at people that come, everyone is of every nationality. And that's what I love because I ask God to give me the nations. 
I ask him to give me the nations everywhere, every race, everyone. Because I want to win the souls that I can. So we can't do it often because we don't have the funds to help us because it costs. And it costs. And this television station I was telling you about, they sent me a thing today and said, can we talk tomorrow? Maybe possibly someone would give to just help you get it started. And I said, Lord, you know. And I want to reach the nation, Lord, because you said, Lord, you said, you asked your disciples, and that includes all of us, to preach the gospel to all nations. Perhaps you have seen the picture of Jesus standing before the door of a house, inviting those inside to open the door and let him come in. And if you look carefully, you'll see there's no outside doorknob. He will not crash in. He only comes in when we open the doors ourselves. Jesus has much to say to us. It's all right for us to shout something back to him. But why wait? Take a moment and get down on your knees, those that can, and join the millions who one day will shout in unison, Jesus Christ is Lord, because the word of God, I don't care who you are, atheist, Buddhist, Jew, Catholic, whomever. I don't care who you are, because this is going to happen. It's not a possibility. It's not chances are. Therefore, Jesus exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that is at the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess. That's going to happen, that Jesus Christ is Lord. So all these people may say, I'm, a, I'm not a believer. I'm an atheist. I'm a, I'm a whatever they want to say. I'm an agnostic. I'm a this. I'm a Muslim. I'm a this. I'm not going to bow down. That's something I hate to burst your bubble today. If you're on here and you're one of those denominations, I hate to say it, but that's going to happen. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's what's going to happen because God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that's above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth. This is in heaven and on earth. Yes, Jesus reigns. He said in heaven and on earth. And under the earth, under the earth, and every tongue shall acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. That's in Philippians 2, 9 and 11. Yes, that's my message. It wasn't a message. Yeah, it's a message to shout about. Yes, it is. But it wasn't a message to this, a message that gets you to really think. Because we can, I'm, I'm serious. We're too close. We don't know. But we're too close. We're too close. And, and, and we need to just get it right. If we want some peace in our life, if we want some happiness and joy in our life, we don't have all the answers, no. Uh, uh, God's not going to tell us everything. But he will carry us through. I promise you, you will not be left worrying and, and going through things because he said, I've already given you the answer to any problem that you endure. But you're going to endure some problems. And if I may seem at a distance, I'm not. But instead of listening to everybody else and taking it to the phone instead of the throne, I'm going to give you the answer because I'm your problem, problem solver. I'm your healer. I'm your provider. I'm your promise keeper. I'm your light in darkness, not man. I will raise up men, raise up people to help you. But it's all about me. You write, Julana G. God said, it's all about him. Do not, and you write, shout it from the housetop. I don't care where I'm somewhere. Somebody said, Shh, well, don't y'all say, then excuse me, get off my rope. I'll go somewhere else. Because I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. For all he's done for me, for what he's brought me through, the goodness of God. And I'm shamed to shout hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Praise the Lord. I worship you, Father. Glory to God. And you may jump out and say, hallelujah, glory. And somebody said, oh, shh, no. And I can run around the house and say it all day long. Because he's been too good to me. I cannot tell it all. And Jesus reigns. Yes, he does. And we have to get ready and prepare ourselves. That this great day is coming, are you going to be ready? Some people think, well, I can ask for forgiveness when I see him. He's a compassionate. Go read about what happens when he comes in the second, the second coming. Apparently, you didn't read it. You have to tell them, go read it if you think he's coming and, and say, okay, but well, you messed up, but all right, I'm just going to give you a second chance. No, your second chance is over. That's why he had people like me and so, so many evangelists and pastors and preachers and teachers 
that I'm here now trying to tell you, no, get it right now because you won't have that second chance. He's a second chance God now. He forgives and on and on. But when Jesus comes, see, all Satan's powers are broken. You can stand there all day long and say, well, Lord, you remember me? I spoke in your name. So today, I've gone over, as usual. But I pray that you took what I said. And if you're one of those who got some itching ears, you need to stop today and see who you're listening to and what you're listening to. Because I don't care who comes. I do not care who comes and tell you Jesus is coming in 30 minutes. Let's just sit here, y'all, because y'all ain't got time. He's coming tomorrow. Go sell everything you got. You can tell them, thank you for sharing what you know. But I know a Savior who don't even know when he's returning. How can you know? Because all of the Father knows. Not even the angels. So who would give you priority over the angels that you can tell me when Jesus is coming? But what you can say, but I'm living and I'm getting it right. So today, family, saints, and friends, I love you all and I don't want to see any of us lost. And everybody don't take my messages so well. But this is what he's given me in 2023. And I have to be obedient and follow his guidance and his leads. Did I know I was going to speak this today? No, I didn't. But God gave it to me at 1030. So that means I had to get it together. Let, let it rain. And we're waiting on that latter rain because it's coming. Great word. Well, thank you, Phyllis. And I always want to say to each of you all now, those who are on as we get ready to end now, that um, share this message with someone. And for those of you, I don't want to talk. I don't like to even mention giving on Wednesdays because that's, I used to do that on Saturdays. But if you haven't given and you plan to give this month, we need it because we need to get on the TV and, and, and get this around the millions. They say millions, not thousands, millions of nations around the world to share the word of God. And we'll be everywhere claiming souls. And it's not in the basis of that we want to get there. But we so need your help. We so need your help. I got one on here now. I got a couple of Three or four on here now that we help. And um, we have a, a victor on for Nairobi that's under our ministry with, uh, with the church there in Nairobi. Uh, who, and so we have uh, a Gertrude on here. And, and, and you saw a story. And, 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 the, and so she needs help right now because the, the, those who was helping, you know, she, you, when you're part of a mission and you try to help and then, you, you know, they can change their mind. They get new leaders in. And she's the one walking around Africa taking letters. And, uh, and Gertrude, you're going to have to get some new sandals, new tennis or something so that you won't be hurting your feet. Sometimes, we, yeah, we got to get the right ones for you. And, uh, and so we have, we, we have Wendy on from South Africa who's going to be helping us actually to, to do a, a crusade there in, in South Africa. And I'm bringing a, a, a Gertrude along uh, with her with that. And uh, so we have different ones on here that we're helping and even people in our own place in, in the United States. And people who are, and we want to be here for you. Some of you may have a hard time, something happened, and we can help you. We don't think just helping other people. We help people up in our own fold as well. So I just want to share that if you if you made a commitment to sow a seed, uh, stand by your commitment and your commitment with God and sow that seed. And, and if you can give, I have so many faithful followers on here, so many. So I want you to consider just, just giving, uh, send it in early, whatever you may have, so that we can get going and get up. And so you don't understand, so many people have been helped through this ministry. I get so many emails and messages, and, 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 and some people who, uh, if they can be in another country, and they're going to share that. Wendy is in South Africa, but she, 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 she ties, she gives, and she's all, all the way there. But, she, but you can do things electronically. So I'm just asking you to, to pray about giving and to help us. We, we're not a big church, but we're a big church in God's heart. And we're doing his work, and we're family. So I want to thank each one of you. I love you again. I want you to be here Saturday. Please be here Saturday. Please tell others to come Saturday and uh, because we want you to be here. And we want others to come and get the word, and I want you to share the word because somebody needs to hear the word today, okay? Somebody needs to hear that word because people don't want to talk about it, and they don't know what they're... But, and those of you who know people, believe they got itching ears, please talk to them and tell them to make sure it's lined up with what God said. He doesn't tell us when he's coming, when Jesus is coming, okay? So I thank you again. Uh, all of the information about our ministry, if you're here for the first time, uh, is in the con comment box. And you can know more about what we do. Uh, you can go to our website. Please go visit. Though. If you haven't seen our trailer, I, 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 please go and watch it in just a few minutes and just see what we're doing. And uh, 
and, and just, you know, share the word of God. Don't keep this uh, with, uh, just with you. Share it with other people who may need to hear it. What you say? The body needs to hear for the message of Christ to be proclaimed. Yes, indeed. So I just thank you. Uh, Lord, we need you every second, every hour. One defense. Yes, yes. I thank you. I thank you, Wendy from South Africa and Gertrude from South Africa. And uh, Gertrude just put a testimony up. Go look at our Tuesday testimony that she put up. And, uh, and can you imagine her walking uh, so many uh, hundred miles around South Africa trying to give out letters to people to, for them to receive and accept Jesus Christ? You got her and you got Wendy, who is a young evangelist. And, and out there. So, you know, then we got we got uh, Victor in, South, in Nairobi, Kenya, who is, is leading a flock there. And, and, you know, we got kids in the Philippines and Haiti and, and, and you know, India. And, and hi, KK from the UK, by where you make a comeback and listen, KK, if you weren't here from the beginning. We got two sponsors. We got uh, Sharon, who's Sharon, who's sponsoring India, and Gertrude. And we need help from others uh, for all we need to do. So I got those stepping up saying, I'll claim that I'll sponsor that. I'll do that. So help us with what you can. You're my one defense. My righteousness, oh God, how I need you. To teach my song to rise to you. When temptation comes my way. And when I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Hey, join me. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. My one defense. My righteousness, oh God, how I need you. You're my one defense. My righteousness, oh God, how I need you. You're my one defense. My righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. I just got a little excited with the song. I just had to just, you know, release. So thank you. Love you each. God love each of you. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Juliana. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Devon and KK. And thank you, Geraldine, my other hand that helps me with everything. Thank you, Sharon from Wisconsin. Phyllis from Memphis. Kelly from Wisconsin. Lee from Ghana. Who do we have on here? Let's see. I didn't get a chance to. We have Wanda. Wanda's on here from, from uh, up there in Monterey, Tennessee, doing her thing and having Bible studies and reaching out for the lost there. And who do we have? Lisa. Lisa's on here. Lisa just got back, I think, from traveling. So Lisa's here from uh, Wisconsin and Gertrude from South Africa, as I mentioned. And, and, and I don't know. Let's see. That Devon came on, yes, from Memphis, Tennessee, and Victor from Nairobi, Kenya, and Linda uh, from uh, Canton, Georgia is on. And uh, let's see who else we have. Lee from Ghana. Okay, okay. Let's see. Wendy, I'm just trying to see Lisa. Let's see. Just want to make sure I don't miss anybody. Surprise. Surprise is here. And Juliana, Phyllis. Uh, uh, let's see. Did I surprise? Did I see Adel on here? Not sure. Okay, Claudia, Linda. Okay, Sharon. I'm just going up the list. Y'all bear with me here. I want to make sure I get everybody. Phyllis, Wanda, Devon. Colleen from New Mexico. Kelly. From Wisconsin. See, I'm glad I'm going on up the list. Wanda. So thank you so very much, everyone. I love you. Geraldine, forgive me because I know I've gone over into your time. So, so I love you each. I will see you on Saturday morning. Okay. Come. Please join me. Saturday. Oh, this is the first Sunday. So we'll be doing communion. Please come. Get your, your, your wafer, your bread, your cracker, your juice, your wine, so you can join me on Saturday morning. Be blessed. God loves you and I love you too. Bye-bye.